Millions of centuries and many years have gone by since we first met our oppressors. Since the first meeting, every single time that we come into contact with these people, nine times out of ten, I will say, I'll play devil's advocate, it's been a negative experience. And that continues to this day, ladies and gentlemen. Regardless if you're a black person that does not want to believe that racism still exists, regardless if you're a non-black person that wants to believe that people who are black are just whining and crying about something that doesn't exist, you're all wrong. Slavery of the mind still exists, and unfortunately, there is a huge fear that still exists in many black people to this day. You see, the people of the past centuries who enslaved our people, some will tell you that those people were those people, that they don't exist anymore, that the people that we live amongst now who have created this and continue this system of oppression are not the same as their forefathers and foremothers. But that's totally untrue because many of them still act the same. Many of them show you every day a daily, on a daily basis, through videos, through all these newsreels, you see that this racism against us continues. Am I saying that black people are completely innocent of things, that we haven't done anything wrong, that we don't commit criminal uh, acts against each other or others? No. But when it comes to the huge impact of racism, no other group of people on this planet have felt it and still feel it harder than black people. Does anyone recognize this young woman? Her name was Reese Taylor. She died December 29th, 2018, at the age of 97. Most of us in the black community who have done our research know about this woman's story. She was raped repeatedly by a group of white men that followed her home as she left church studies one evening. Some women in the black community who decide to swirl will use this story to say that black men do not protect black women, but that is completely untrue. Her husband had been working and her father had been home. This woman decided to go to church. There was no problems before, even though they lived in an era where there was very heavy racism. And we still live in an era where racism still exists and rears its ugly head today. She felt safe enough to walk home. Some would say, yeah, she should have been picked up. It would have been safer that way. But to be honest, if it was going to happen, it still would have happened. Someone would have died defending her. But here's the thing. When it did happen to her, and she stayed at her father's house alongside her husband, her father stayed outside and slept in a tree with a shotgun. So if these people decided to come back when she wanted to get, you know, put them away for what they did to her, he would make sure he would shoot them on sight. He did what a father is supposed to do, protect his child. He couldn't protect her in that particular instance, but he did his best afterwards. That's not saying much, but it is saying much in a way. And these, I believe one or two men did actually get convicted. And one of them got out in the 60s. I believe this happened in the... Uh, in the late 40s or early 50s, okay? I haven't read about this story in a minute, but I remember it a little. And uh, I know that one of the guys that got out mistaken another black woman for her, for Reese Taylor, and he murdered her, thinking it was Reese Taylor, but it wasn't. The reason why I bring up Reese Taylor's story and not even Sarah Bartman's, which is even more brutal because of what they did to her, okay, is because... You can look at a black woman like this. Pretty decent, beautiful looking black woman as far as I'm concerned. Black women are beautiful in any era as far as I'm concerned. White men would rape them. During the slave times, white men would just take a black woman who was married to a black man who was the mother of children, okay? And since the slave is his property, he would just take her up to his room and have sex with her anytime he wanted despite having his own wife, his own white wife, to, to have in bed with, he'd want to try a black woman. And this became what caused the inception of these biracial children, okay? 
these octoroons and half breeds, some people call them. I won't call them that. But white men have a history of raping black women from the slavery times and on, even to this day. You know, these uh, these swirlers out here want to tell me that rape exists in the black community as well, and I acknowledge that. I'm not going to say that black men don't rape black women. But when I'm calling out the racist, I'm telling you what they have been doing to our women. They have raped our women. They have lynched our men. They have fed our babies to alligators and crocodiles as bait. They kick our children. They kill our children. Okay? This is what these swirlers and what these men who want to divest, who want to save themselves from black women are promoting they're promoting and they're promoting these relationships with these types of people who have done this to women like her who have done disgusting inhumane things to men like me and to our children they don't let us forget that we were slaves either they come out with various various slave movies many of them have come out throughout the years one such movie is mandingo you see the poster here the white man taking his slave woman and the black slave pleasuring the white woman of the house because she can't get pleasure from her white male counterpart. This is what happened in those slave times. Personally, I don't love, I don't even like slave movies, but it's good to know your history. It lets you know what they think about you, what they did to your ancestors. But I don't personally like these movies at all because they make me angry ultimately because we don't win in these movies. We are people's property. We are people's pets. There are instances of, you see right here, where the man is standing on top of the child. You can't really see it, but there is a scene in there where the man is taking off his shoes and sits on top of the boy's back. It is disgusting. a disgusting display of how America has treated our ancestors, and we still get treated like shit to this day. And I'm talking about the black people that have done nothing but live their lives as regular citizens, regular Americans, regular people following the law and just providing for their families and providing for themselves. This is a photo from Boston, 1976, as the schools were going to integrate. And even though it was 1976 and only a couple of years prior, nine years prior, I should say, or was it, let me see, seven years prior to this, interracial marriage was deemed uh, lawful. It didn't stop the racists from coming out and attacking those black people who wanted to integrate with them. We have black people, literally to this day, that want to integrate with the very people who show them nothing but hatred. It's like being in an abusive relationship, being the abused woman or the abused man who keeps getting abused over and over again, but keeps coming back and showing love to the person that has absolutely no love for you. I don't understand why we have people in the black community that are like this, and I don't want to understand it because I am not one of them. I've never been one of them, and I'm not going to be one of them. I'm not going to raise my kids to be like that either. I'm never going to raise my kids to be hateful, but I'm going to be raising my kids to be mindful and to understand you love yourself and some people out there, including this particular group of people, are going to hate you just because of, because of the color of your skin. And that's disgusting, but that's the way this world is. And a lot of people want to ignore the fact that racism still continues to exist and lie to us and tell us that it doesn't. But it does because we see it every day in our lives. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, how much more evidence did you need? How much more evidence do you need? They literally had coloreds, a colored sign for you and your woman and your children. They had other places that said serve whites only. And we literally still have black people fighting to be and living among these people. Giving their lives to integrate with people that have nothing but hatred for them. This is just like the most crazy... I just can't bring my head to wrap around how people even thought that this would even be a good idea to fight for this. I just don't understand. I don't. I know a lot of you integrationalist black people out there don't want to hear this, but the simple fact of the matter is this. When we lived amongst each other and only each other, 
we had so much more love for each other, ladies and gentlemen, as opposed to now being integrated. We looked out for each other. We loved one another. We raised our kids the right way with morals and standards. We owned our own properties, our own businesses. We had money coming into our communities every single day. We looked out for each other. Black men focusing on black women. Black women focusing on black men. Black men and black women together focusing on raising their black children and being financially stable and progressing in a world that was against them. I've told you many times, you've heard it many times, Black Wall Street is the perfect example of how black people, if they put their minds to it, can get along, get things running, and make a success of themselves. But the jealous non-black people out there, because of a lie that a bitch told, destroyed an entire city that was progressing without any financial help from non-black people. The simple fact of the matter is that when we are together and united, we are strong. If we are not together and united, we are never going to get anywhere. And those black men and black women out there that want to interracially date, those ones who have the integrationalist mind, those who want to do everything to undermine black progress, they don't deserve to be called black. They don't deserve to have our support. They don't deserve to have our love, period. Because they are stopping progress. They are stopping us from moving forward. They are trying to keep us in the situation that we are in. And for those who are, quote unquote, say they woke, they are woke from this nightmare, they should stay woke, okay? Because you're fooling yourself if you believe that these people who you keep telling black women and keep telling black men are your best option because there are no options when it comes to black men. There are no options when it comes to black women that you need to date out. No. No. You're only kidding yourself. You're only fooling yourself. <laughs>